Hello everybody, thank you for tuning in to Channel BK. My name is Brian Luck. I'm here. I told you I am here. I am back. I'm ready to go. Ready to talk about Massive Attacks Mezzanine. And it's it's great. It's great. Clearly I picked the correct shirt for this review as well. But anyways, Massive Attack is a famed trip-hop and electronic group from the UK comprising of members Daddy G, 3D, Mushroom, and Tricky, of which Tricky was not actually involved with this album. He joined the group again later down the road, and Mushroom actually left the group after this album, which we'll get to in a little bit. This album comes four years after their sophomore album, Protection, but in reality, if we're talking about the genesis, the origins of the group, this comes seven years after Blue Lines, which came out in 1991, which put the group on the front lines of the trip-hop scene. That album was very well received critically, and it did very well commercially for them to become a household name, to put themselves out there. And again, in the early 90s, music like this was becoming a little more relevant with the electronic and house scene in the UK. And again, this was a very defining album for the group themselves, but also the genre and the time that it came out. Now, with this album, Mezzanine, their third album, they they chose to change things up a lot. Their first two albums were obviously big into the rap, hip-hop, electronic, R&B, soul, all that stuff. This album, there's more rock, there's darker stuff, there's more experimental stuff, there's more industrial sounds, it's more in your face, it's grimier. And for that very reason, talking about this album is going to be very interesting and important because I think, one, this album still has not aged at all whatsoever. I think it sounds like it could have came out today. It, it has such a great sound to it. Also, the mixing and mastering on it, too, is so, so smooth and so incredible. And I'm, again, blown away by how fantastic this album still sounds and for the group themselves, them changing things up. There are some things about this album too that made them kind of shift what their sound was down the road as well with a lot of issues that they had in the group and all these external things going on as well. But this album became a benchmark for them. It's a little over an hour, it's much longer than their last two albums, and it's, it's fantastic. And I think sonically and vocally this album is much more interesting to me than their debut. I think the songwriting is much more interesting, the sonics are much more interesting, and the flow is there. And again, if you're gonna get into this sound of music, this is definitely an album to listen to because I see so much of this album in music now. Again, for better or worse, besides the point, I still think this album's fantastic and it really showed a lot of interesting stuff you can do in the genre. And again, for them as a group, it brought them to new territory. And this album, off the bat, shows you that it's very different with a song called Angel, which opens it. And the... The bass is thumping. I love the sound of it. I love the way that the guitar licks kind of crescendo and give it this really eerie creepy sound the way the drums and heavier guitar come in in the second half are amazing as well horse andy is as i believe how you pronounce the name of the singer who has worked with massive attack a lot their vocals do an amazing job really setting the stage for what this album's could have bring you but again it works with the sound as well. It kind of throws you off. But then we get to Rising Sun, which has 3D and Daddy G going at it with their rap verses, which sound really good on the song. It has like this really grimy beat to it. It, it. it definitely feels a lot more like what they were doing, but again, just a little darker. And it, it definitely was pulling a lot of elements from that music as well. And it definitely felt like what they were doing before, but again, with a darker sound. And it, and it, the progression of that is really interesting. And there's still a lot of stuff on here that is definitely pulled from their older work or stuff that they've done in the past. One of the things I was very intrigued about uh, about this album is something that I never knew, which was members of the group split off and like did their own songs and things for this album and came together which I didn't realize it. it. It reminded me of like a Rumors where 
they were all just like doing these things and like talking crap about each other but making songs about it and they were all playing them together obviously it's not the same again there were some issues down the line with this album internal conflicts which we'll get to as well but i thought that was very interesting to sort of learn from this album teardrop is probably a song that most people who don't really know of the group have probably heard this song is very very infamous the harpsichord is so iconic the ding 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 just the clicking of the beat the way those creepy just clinky pianos come in boom boom like it's it, again it's iconic for a reason it has a great build it's beautiful it's it's emotional and the vocals from Elizabeth Fraser of the Cockatoo Twins makes it very, very well done too. Her inflection is great. Again, another collaborator on this album where she shows up a lot. And I don't know from what I was reading into that she was obviously good friends with Jeff Buckley and she found out about Jeff Buckley's passing during the recording of this. Now, I don't necessarily know if the timeline of that is the moment she was recording this, I don't necessarily know that, but if it does, and that is the case, it makes for a more emotional track. And again, with electronic music and house music, you don't need to go over the top, right? You just need to make solid lyrics that stick in your head, a good chorus, right? And I do think vocally and, and, and songwriting wise, this album is a lot more interesting to me than something like their debut where... I think sometimes the rap verses didn't 100% do it for me. I think this album, mainly because of the sound though, it makes it a lot more interesting. And I think the songwriting is much better too, and it sticks out a lot more. Inertia Creeps. This, to me, I could hear Tom York doing his like Tom York thing, singing this song. I love the way it starts with the build, the Turkish sample with those drums and it sounds like these weird kind of horns and the way it cuts out and it's like and it, it is, it, it, this is probably one of my favorite tracks on the album. It's so rhythmic, it's so infectious, it's, it's so memorable. 3D's verses on here too are so central and like, not uncomfortable. Maybe the way he's singing and rapping is uncomfortable, but it's definitely a very flirtatious lust song, you know? And the way he's going into those lyrics with the instrumentation, he rocks it very well. And it definitely gives you that kind of vibe, too. And again, everything just works together with the flow of the song. Exchange shows off Mushroom's talents a little bit, where we are seeing kind of like, it, it sounds like a dreamy, like you're at a jazz club, like and it's very dreamy, and you're just kind of chilling, and it's a nice break for the album. This is definitely a moment where Mushroom, you know, showing off his own talents. We'll get to a song later where he actually was really big into sampling certain things that kind of were putting the group at a divide because they didn't want to get in trouble, and one of the songs on here actually has a sample that they got in trouble for, which is why after this album, they stop sampling stuff, which is really upsetting because I think some of the samples on here do a really good job just adding that extra touch. Dissolve Girl has Sarah J. Hockley on vocals, and I feel like it's like either I'm watching a movie where, you know, you go into the nightclub scenes and all the people are dancing really slow, but like the person is walking, like it's like from like the newest John Wick movie, or like when a detective does that, where they're walking through like a crowd of drugged out people in a club and everything's in slow-mo, but like they kind of are like super serious. Or I may be fucking drugged out <laughs> listening to this song because it's it's so just nasty sounding and just the simplistic kind of like, it, it doesn't sound cheap, but it's like the beat itself doesn't sound so like, it doesn't pop like the rest of this album. It's very just nasty and gross and it's like, and again, the track has that beating bass and it's going, it's going, it's going. And then there's the guitar licks in the second half that are like, dum, 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 dum. Man Next Door is actually a cover of here. I'm going to see real quick because I don't want to remember all this. John Holt's I've Got to Get Away, which then was covered by the Slits, which is more of a cover of the Slits song. And it definitely sounds like a reggae cover with some of the instrumentation. It's still electronic -y and hard hitting, but the vocals are definitely there. And it is a very solid track. And again, a nice change of pace. Black Milk was the song that I was talking about where 
It has a sample, once again, I apologize, tribute by Manfred Mann's Earth Band. This got them into a lot of trouble, even though I don't know necessarily how much it's, from what I saw, it's like the majority of the track is like bar for bar in this song. But I love the R&B vibes on here. I love the slow kind of moodiness to it. It sounds really good. Elizabeth Frazier's vocals are also on this and it does not sound like the same person. It's incredible what she does here. Like it's so great. Mezzanine brings uh, Daddy G and 3D back together. I love the way they trade off of each other. This song had a lot of different versions I guess you could say because it is the title track and I could see this track being kind of the culmination of a lot of what this album is with some of the clunkiness, some of the darkness, some of their old trip hop flavors and I, I still think the track is very well done. It's a song where I just feel like it's fun listening to it knowing that this is not what they still wanted to put out. They just at the last second were like, this is what we have. Like, we don't really have a 100% confirmation on what we want, so this is it, but I love it. The drums are really great on it and the way that it cuts out and cuts back. And again, they're playing off of each other is awesome. Group four has Elizabeth singing on it once again, and this is like the big bombastic ending. It's the longest track on here. The builds on here are very unique. I love the way that it starts very dreamy and kind of club-like at the beginning. But then I love the second half with the bum bum bananana out and then a big just this big crescendo and Elizabeth's it builds and it gets faster and more intense and it's it's incredible, which kind of is hits you in the face when exchange parentheses ends the album with Horace Andy again uh, doing some lyrics on it, but it's the same track. It's a little bit more washed out. It sounds like you're hearing it in another room and then the album's over. If you haven't listened to this album, it's a sonic journey and it, it has a good flow to it. And again, for coming out at the time that it came out, I think it's just odd to me because nothing, I don't know of a lot that sounded like this. Now, again, I'm ignorant to that because I'm not really into that kind of music and I'm still trying to get there with listening to older and newer stuff and dive into that. But this album is just fantastic for, again, for what they were doing as a group, for the time it came out, for the music that was coming out, all of that. And, you know, so much history is ingrained with this album, too, for them as a group. But again, it's, 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 it's their achievement, in my opinion. This album is just incredible, and it's something that I think is going to be remembered for a long time, and it's fantastic, and if you want to go down that sonic journey, you should, because it's awesome. Uh, if you've listened to the album, what do you think of it down below with your favorite tracks, all that fun stuff. If you like, please like, please subscribe as well. Uh, it would really help out. Check out my other classic album reviews. We're going to keep them coming. So thank you all so much for watching, and thank you for tuning in to Channel BK. Peace out, everyone.